What's up, gangsters? How about some minutes of random? It's been a while since I did one of these. Uh, they seem to be getting further and further apart and longer and more disorganized. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. Uh, such is life. Anyhow, the first random thing is right here on me. Yep, check it out. This is my new Sprue Cutters Union t-shirt, which I got from the Sprue Cutters Union store over at redbubble.com, which you can find at uh, by searching Sprue Cutters. I think I also have a tag in there for Sprue Cutters Union. Anyway, uh, we have three different designs, uh, and you can get everything from coffee cups to water bottles to t-shirts to hoodies, uh, and it's all super dope stuff. Now wait, you ask, what the heck is the Sprue Cutters Union? Well, that's the other random thing. Sprue Cutters Union is the uh, almost brand new podcast started by uh, Chris Meddings. He's the boss of the thing myself and our partner in crime, Tracy Hancock. And I say almost brand new because at this point we are now up to episode four, which just dropped yesterday, uh, July 31st, 2021. So get out there, check it out, catch up. Uh, you can find it uh, everywhere you find podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, you know, all of the regular podcast apps. You can also go to uh, a, uh, we have, there's a web page, an aggregator that's been put together by the guys who uh, do uh, Scale Model Podcast. I think that's right. And I believe the website is modelpodcasts.com and it's got a list and links of all of the current podcasts that are running, which I think is up to, I don't know, six or eight at this point. Uh, and there's lots of good uh, audio content to soothe your ears while you're at your workbench. Anyway, now let's get on to the other random stuff. All right, so now let's get into this pile of stuff that's been collecting on my workbench. I don't even know where to start. Uh, okay, how about this? I, I These were recommended uh, because uh, I've been doing a lot of oil paint rendering lately, and I was whining about the fact that my favorite little paint oil paint palette knife, which is great, you know, uh, only lasts for so long because it's the blade is just clipped off of a piece of uh, leftover stainless steel or nickel silver photo etch. And you can see that it starts to crack at the base eventually. Uh, it works wonderfully while it works, but then I have to, to replace it and eventually I'm going to run out of the photo etch that I need to make the blades. So somebody said, oh, well, you can just get these oil paint knives off of uh, Amazon. So this was like, I don't know, like six bucks or something. So it came in a set of two. And this is the small one. And I used it a little bit yesterday. And it's not bad, but it's kind of big, kind of cumbersome for me anyway. Um, it, you know, for the tiny amounts of oil paint that I'm typically mixing up, the other thing is is really better. So I don't know. I'll keep this around, see how it works. I mean, it does have a nice flexible blade. Maybe what I'll do is modify the blade, make it smaller, because I could. I could do that. It's nice and thin. I could just chop some of it off and make it uh, a smaller blade. That is an idea. So I'll put that over there. Okay, so uh, yeah, so... Speaking of cutting tools, uh, so um, I got a really, really cool box of things uh, about a month ago, I think. Um, it, it had a lot of goodies in it. And the guy that sent it to me, super nice guy, super cool guy, he just, for whatever reason, had some extra stuff and he thought that I would be interested and that I might enjoy some of it. So he sent it to me which was, was really awesome, and I, and I really did appreciate that. One of the things that he sent me uh, is this pair of Dispier nippers. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I mean, has anybody ever come to a, like a definitive agreement on what, how you say that word? I don't know, but they make really cool shit, and these nippers are awesome. This packaging is first class. I mean, this is, you know, this is like Apple computer or iPhone level packaging. 
you get it's you know the, the nippers come in a foam thing you get a little wrench which you need to have so that you can adjust this little uh, uh, grub screw right here that controls how far you can close the things because you don't want them to close too far that's what makes them dull so uh, just you know this is my first time to actually have my hands on any of, of the dispia stuff and, and I'm super impressed I typically don't mind paying a little bit more for this fancy packaging even though I know that that's really all it is I really respect the passion um, that uh, you know that, that that people who do this have for their products and now I'm kind of exploring this package and I see there's this kind of little hidden compartment so let's see what's in there got a little like an instruction card kind of tells you some things about how to use and not use of course all in Chinese so not really helping uh, much maybe it's in oh look it's in English on this side so maybe I'll read it. We'll see. It talks about the uh, reasons for uh, the single blade design. I've actually got a video where I talked about the physics of a single blade design, which is far superior to a double blade design. So anyway, that's pretty neat. Uh, I, I love the, the packaging. Now, one thing that I have to point out because I'm just, you know, uh, I just, you know, because I, I think uh, anybody who watches my channel knows that I'm a no bullshit guy and, I, and I'm going to give you the straight scoop. So when I took these out of the package, uh, it, it, I, I, I noticed that the uh, edge right here was a little bit uh, mangled. This is the the cutting edge right here on the Come on, focus up camera. There on the right hand side, that's the cutting edge. The left hand side is the anvil edge. And it was a little bit mangled. And I was like, oh, well, that's, you know, it, it happens. Um, and, and I'm not pointing that out to throw shade on the guy who sent them to me. He didn't even know what had happened. I'm pointing it out for two reasons. One, to highlight how thin and delicate the blade on these things is, and you can see it's still a little bit uh, warped, but actually I took care of most of it, you can see, by just working it with a 400 grit sanding stick and just grinding it back flat so it's better. It wasn't really a problem to start with, and really I do, and anybody should do, most of their cutting with nippers of any kind really, but especially these, back here at the back of the jaws because that's where your maximum leverage is. Yeah, sometimes you don't have any choice but to cut clear out here at the tip and that's okay, but it's really better to cut closer to the pivot point. So anyway, he didn't even know what had happened. And, and so, you know, really no fault of his because it's just one of those things. Could have happened to anybody. But I'm pointing it out so that you can kind of see, uh, you know, just how thin that blade is. Like when you compare it, to the uh, nippers, these are my Gundam Planet 1.0 nippers that I've had going on uh, like six or seven years now. And when you uh, look at the relative thickness of the blades, let me, maybe there's a better way I can hold these where you can see it. Uh, hold on here, I'll get this. Okay, get the actual cutter blade facing up on both of them okay there you go that 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 should give you a, a look you can see the dispia in my left hand much thinner much finer than the blade of the gundam planet nippers these things have been pretty bulletproof they've been great and i you know i don't baby my tools i use them i don't abuse them but i use them for what i need to use them for so that means that if i'm going to need to cut a you know piece of sprue then I do that, even though people say, oh no, you're never supposed to do that. And you can see, you know, those chop that off, no problem. These uh, dispiers will do it as well, but they are noticeably sharper uh, and pretty, pretty impressive uh, in their ability to slice that 
off super easy and super clean. And you can see there's essentially no deformation of the plastic, which is what happens when you're using two opposing wedges to cut something like that, is you're basically just stretching it until it snaps. Now, uh, in the same uh, box, uh, what actually no different box, he sent me these later because he felt bad about the other ones being uh, a, little, a little tweaked. So he sent me these, and he really did not need to do it, but you know, he's just a, he's just a good guy. So anyway, uh, now I'm in possession of the legendary God Hand SPN 120s, which as you know, are much revered in the Gundam community, and you know, sort of widely agreed to be the best. They sort of, I think, started the movement towards the uh, single blade style nipper. Then also, uh, I've got this pair of God Hand PN120. These are the slightly less expensive version of the same thing. So this is pretty cool because for the first time in my experience, I get to do this uh, direct head to head comparison. So let's take a look at the at the PN120 uh, and you can see it's a bit more like the uh, like my Gundam Planet nippers that you know that that cutter is just a little bit thicker a little heavier duty and you know all the other sort of details look uh, pretty similar to you know some other ones that we've seen out there you can see it's got a really heavy anvil on the anvil side so Let's see how it cuts. First time I've had them out of the package, so I have no idea how this is gonna go. I mean, it cuts pretty good. There's some resistance, and, and you can see just a, a little bit of, of strain there on the material, but I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty comparable to, uh, I would say, maybe slightly less sharp than my Gundam Planets. So now let's go for the real deal. Let's see what they do. And you can see, look how thin that cutting blade is, but it's got a, you know, a pretty nice flat face on the uh, other side there. So let's see what the blue handled wonders produce. Uh, this, this is a big moment here at at uh, the headquarters of Rube Goldberg Enterprises. Ooh, yeah. I mean, look, you can see I, I took that super thin slice off right there, no problem. And pretty much zero strain or deformation except on the side where the anvil is, which is to be expected, but it's not really not really an issue. And again, this is not the normal thing that you're going to be doing with these things. You're going to be cutting parts off at the gate. So yeah, look, these are super impressive. Uh, just, just to, you know, as a very quick comparison with the Dispier, um, are they, uh, are they as much better as the price would indicate? Because if I recall correctly, the Dispia are like 45 or 50 bucks and the God Hands SP and 120 are like 80 bucks or something. I don't know. It's been a while since I looked at the prices for those. Uh, honestly, um, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say I would not pay the extra money for the SP and 120. I would go straight for the Dispia. Um, I think... Um, you know, but I might even choose the God, my, my, I might even choose my original, uh, Gundam Planet nippers over all of them in terms of pure value though, because these were like 35 bucks. They have a version 2.0 that's out now. And if I understand correctly, these are made by Minishima. So you can possibly even find them under that brand name. But honestly, uh, I think these might be the best value. These Gundam Planet ones might be the best value out of all of them. Because even though they're a little less shishi, uh, you know, these obviously are a little bit filthy. Um, these things have been phenomenal for 
it's like I said, like six, seven years now, and I've had no thoughts of replacing them. I'm stoked that I've got these now to add, you know, that I can also use and that I can compare them to, but these things have never let me down. Uh, as, and I've dropped them on the floor a few times and they didn't snap the tip off, which is one of the complaints people have with the uh, Gundam Planet ones. All right, uh, anyway, this is all, this was also in the box. This is pretty neat. This little mini thing. I've never painted a, a Wargaming mini, um, and I honestly don't know if I will uh, paint this one or not. Um, it's, I just, you know, it's, I want to, but I just have uh, so much stuff that I want to do. Um, but I want to take this out of here because the one thing that is pretty clear is that the detail on this is is really astonishing. I assume that this is uh, 3D printed and then cast, and uh, both the printing and the casting is super clean. I mean, you can see how, how tiny she is. Uh, wait, is this a she? No, not a she. Okay, I thought that if this was a she that she looked kind of horse-faced. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty impressive. The detail is really, really good. I mean, maybe this guy can be a buddy for Yoshi. Uh, he gets lonely, you know. He only has me to sit here at the bench with, and, uh, and, I, and I let him collect dust, and he gets mad about that. But this guy could be his bro. Like, they could bro down, hang out, and, and, you know, talk, I don't know, about, like, Dungeons and Dragons and kamikaze attacks and stuff. I don't know. But uh, I think Yoshi might be a little jealous of, of the detail this guy has, uh, plus that giant spear. I mean, that's, you know, what dude doesn't want to have a giant spear? <laughs> Not a metaphor, I promise. Anyway, um, all right, so that's that. Now go, let's go over here to a larger figure. This is something that I've been wanting for a long time. I started seeing this one pop up uh, on the old interwebs like six months ago. Uh, Marco Frisani's YouTube channel, uh, he paints one of these. And, 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 and he's you know such a cool guy that he got one before they were actually available. But it's, uh, it is super dope. Uh, I got it from Big Child Miniatures, uh, which I think is in Spain, and I was pretty impressed because it arrived via DHL like a week after I ordered it. And I got this combo uh, that they sell as a package, which includes this uh, really neat looking plinth. Not sure what kind of wood that is, but it's beautiful. So all you gotta do is drill a hole in it and you gotta mount. And I think that the combo cost me with shipping uh, was like just over 50 bucks maybe. But look at the detail. Uh, I mean, this is, this is insanity. And this obviously is from a digital print. Uh, I mean, digital artwork converted into a 3D print. It's just so crisp. And look at, at the texture even on the, this, this blanket. Look at how crisp that is, and the little skull thing, and then this part that's got her face, which is really good. If it'll focus, come on there, which really, come on, which this should be like facial recognition stuff happening right now. Anyway, look at that. Casting is, is perfectly smooth. It's just really good, and a lot of texture in the hair which is one of the complaints I had with that uh, little bust I did from Robot Rocket Miniatures earlier this year. The hair just had no texture, and it meant that a ham-fisted barbarian like me had a really tough time painting it. So this should be a lot, a lot more fun. So, super cool. Uh, let's see, this is the torso, and you can see again, just uh, the level of detail uh, with like the necklace, yeah, I know, you guys are just like, oh yeah, look at the boobies. Yeah, whatever. Uh, look at that detail. Just amaze balls. So, I am looking forward to the day that I feel any kind of confident uh, ab about my abilities to actually paint this thing. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I'm nearly ready 
to to try this thing. Uh, it's 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 way better than I am at figure painting, and uh, uh, I just yeah I don't know I think I'm I'm gonna do my Viking bust and maybe some other ones. So this may be like. I don't know, at the rate that I go, this could be years down the road, but at least I have one in my stash. Uh, it's kind of getting to where this type of thing is made up, is making up the largest percentage of my stash, which is really not very big. Like I have like 25 kits maybe, if that. Okay, this is something that's pretty cool. These are some samples that arrived. Uh, because my buddy Matt Bull, owner of Hobby World USA and all around good guy, uh, bought all of the, of the True Details product line, physical inventory and licensing, intellectual property rights, the whole, you know, branding, the whole kit and caboodle when Squadron uh, had their bankruptcy sale. So, He's got all this stuff. He's going to have it on his website. He's going to be selling all this stuff. Probably already has it. He sent this to me over a month ago, maybe two months ago. Um, and, you know, so he's got some of the old school original stuff that was obviously hand sculpted. And I was curious to see it because I just never had looked at any of, of the True Details stuff. And, you know, some of it's not bad. Some of it is obviously old school hand sculpted stuff. And, and he's talking about possibly... Uh, like re-engineering, you know, like do, you know, doing maybe some 3D printing, uh, recasting uh, some of the stuff that's like really common, like, you know, things like uh, P47 wheels, Mustang wheels, that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with that. And I have no doubt that it will be good. Uh, speaking of cool products, this is fun. I got this neat package from Tom Anniz, uh at, uh, obviously, of Anna's Models. Uh, he of the really cool uh, uh, decals for, uh, you know, the universal labels and things. And now that I'm looking at this, I think there's supposed to be more in this package than I have. Okay, cool. I was having a moment of panic there for a second because I just had one envelope and I was afraid that maybe I had lost something that he sent me because I knew that not only was he sending me a sample of these uh, new Chrome uh, Universal placards, you can see the printing is in Chrome. And of course it's facsimile printing, but these would represent like more modern placards that you might find on uh, modern jets. And also we've got some of his Universal strip decals these are just in silver, but this is the thing that's really exciting is these right here. Look at these. These are chrome strips. Check it out. I mean, that's as chromey as chrome is going to get. That's like better than bare metal foil chrome. And this is what they're supposed to be for. Okay, sorry about that. Typical piss poor production work on my part. Card ran out of space, had to delete some files. Anyway, so look, these are supposed to be a replacement for bare metal foil in certain applications. Places where you might use bare metal foil on a landing gear oleo like I've done here. Okay, these are from the 132nd P40 Warhawk. And yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty traditional to use a strip of bare metal foil for that. You got to cut a strip off, you got to stick it on, you got to use some super glue. Well, these are decals and they apply the same as any other decal, although Tom cautions against using excessive setting solutions. So this is going to be really interesting. I'm going to experiment with these. I'm going to test out, test them out and uh, talk about them some more down the road. But this is just really cool stuff. Tom is just a really innovative guy. He's an amazing model maker in his own right. Um, and, and he just, so you know, he comes at this from stuff that he would like to have, you know, to help himself in his own projects. And so you get, you know, really good stuff like these white gauge faces uh, and some more of these uh, placards. Uh, just, you know, just smart, cool stuff that, uh, you know, it's just great to have around because, 
you never know when something like this will really make the difference and add some pop on whatever project you're working on. Now, um, here's a couple of books. This is a really neat book. This is old. Again, this is something that somebody just sent me um, that they didn't want anymore, and this is super cool. I can't read any of it, obviously. It's all in Japanese, but I can tell it's about P-47s. And this is from 1971, so kind of a collector's item. It's cool. It's got some really neat, uh, you know, photos that I had not seen before, reference material for a jug, and I have uh, P-47 plans in my, in my future. So this is uh, something that will definitely be cool to have around. It's just, it's just neat. And look, even they, on the bare metal ones, they use this reflective silver paint on the color panels. It's pretty cool. Got this neat cutaway drawing. So anyway, good stuff. But this book right here is what I really want to talk about. You guys know I, I, I mentioned the Sprue Cutters Union podcast up front. So we just, uh, we interviewed David Parker and we talked a lot about Ming Air Modeler and AFV Modeler. And I'm not a magazine guy. I just, I like, I would not normally get a subscription to any of these magazines. Um, but I, after, you know, talking to David and looking at the stuff on the website, which is MingAFVModeler.com, I was so impressed that I bought myself a six month subscription. And I am, I'm, I am super impressed. The quality of the model making in here is really high. The photography is really good. The layout is fantastic. It's just got a really nice, modern, high-end feel to it. And this is exactly what I would want out of a model making magazine. So I'm pretty stoked about having a subscription to it and I'm actually looking forward to getting into it and reading all of these articles, which is a change for me because I normally find these articles to be just uh, uh, intolerably boring. But these, yeah, I actually want to read. So very cool stuff. Okay, this episode of The Randoms is gonna be pretty disjointed, even more than usual. But yeah, I didn't wanna finish up without uh, showing this. Um, this is the P40. I uh, showed you the landing gear a second ago. Um, I have been continuing to work on it since the last episode of these randoms. And uh, what I've been doing over the last month or three weeks, whatever, is a, uh, I did a seven part series on oil paint rendering showing in, of course, <laughs> exhaustive detail how I did all of these effects uh, that are done with oil here on the bottom of the thing, top of the thing, pretty much every surface, uh, you know, down to the uh, prop blades, the spinner, uh, the drop tank, which is like turned into one of my favorite parts, that filthy little thing right there, and, uh, a set of exhaust stacks that are ready to go on there. So pretty stoked about those. Uh, anyway, this thing is now ready for final assembly and uh, hopefully it'll be done done pretty soon.